It's at times like this, in the cold, in the dark, I feel that I'm losing my way, that the city I've given myself to threatens to crush me with the weight of my commitment to her. The Joker, a looting and killing spree at a charity ball. It took 27 hours to bring the monster down. Two knife wounds need medical attention. The only loose end is the driver, Buster Snibs, and $400,000 in charity money. Gotham is the largest city in the country, but Buster knows it's not big enough to keep him safe from me. Last night, I persuaded Buster that it was in his best interest to tell me where the Joker was. Somehow, he pulled a fast one on his loss and made off with the money, but I've been keeping tabs on him. I'm tired of men like Buster. Morally bankrupt and unimaginative. Empty, meaningless men feeding off my city and contributing nothing. It's time to go to work. Why would he stop in the middle of the bridge? He stares at the top of the parapet and a look steals over his face that I can't put my finger on. He must have the money stashed up there. I watch him climb the face of the wall and it hits me. It's not the money. He's going to jump. Pain gone. Exhaustion gone. There is only adrenaline and a target. Ugh! Sloppy. Painful, but effective. No! Buster's gratitude warms my heart. I consider leaving him to hang while I quietly pass out. It takes everything I've got to pull him up. Last night you threatened to drop me off a rooftop and tonight you stopped me? What's the matter, fruitcake? Can't make up your mind? The wave of dizziness hits me. He's reaching for something. Don't move, you freak. The Joker's been put away, Buster. You're safe now. Safe? <laughs> you idiot! Who do you think you're dealing with? How many times has he been caught? You morons always let him escape! Chucky So gave me the word. The Joker knows I ratted him out. He wanted me to know that when he gets out, he'll be looking me and my family up to show his appreciation. You self-righteous nut. You used me in your little game of cops and robbers. But the Joker will never get his hands on any of my family. I couldn't bear the thought of my wife or daughter in the hands of that maniac. So I killed them myself. Buster. I'll see you in hell, you masked lunatic. No. What have I done? He craves fame. But only as this fictional construct, the Batman. This, of course, indicates both schizophrenia and a split personality. I may be mayor, but off the record, Gordon, the man must be a total head case. Don't you agree, Bruce? See you in hell, you best lunatic! What have I done? Mother, father, I have something to tell you. I tell them of a man named Buster Snibs. A man who had a wife and child. By the time I am done, my body is racked with an uncontrollable sobbing. They remain frozen through it all, as if they were hanging on my every word, urging me to discover the center of this grief, to heal it from the inside out. You fool! You think you know pain, you coward. I will show you pain. I am not sure how, not sure why, but as my heart floods with terror, I am sure of one thing. I am facing myself. Have I got 
got your attention, Bruce. Who are you? Who am I? Don't be stupid, Bruce. You know who I am. And you know why I'm here. You've been looking at the pictures. Feeling sentimental, old man. Ah, here's one from Christmas. Mom, Dad. It's tough for you at Christmas, isn't it, Bruce? They left you when you were so young. You wonder what it would have been like to grow up with them. Alive. But they're dead, Bruce. Just like Snib's wife and child. Stop! Dead. 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 Please. Dead. Stop. Dead. I know this can't be Dead. real. Dead. A trick. Dead. Scarecrow. Dead. Must be a trick of some kind. Dead. They can't help you anymore, weakling. They're dead. dead. It's all this morbid introspection. That and Buster. I'm sure losing two pints of blood didn't help either. For now, I think I better get some. My god. Perhaps. But lately you've been lacking faith. This can't be real. Reality isn't the issue. Whether this is happening in the far reaches of space or on the head of a pin is irrelevant. What you need to know is I will not be dismissed. I am not a costume, a persona you can cast off. I am the very heart of you. During our youth, I lay dormant within you, faceless, nameless. I existed, but I could hear, I could feel. Wow! I remember that Christmas, Bruce. It was the day we first met. Zoro, this is the best gift. It's exactly what I wanted. Thanks, Mom and Dad. You're welcome, dear. Open mine, Dad. Oh, thanks, son. It was a glorious morning. We ran about and sang, bathed in the light of the morning sun and their love. Now, Thomas, I thought we agreed. No surprises this year. Oh, Thomas. Even the great Zorro could feel the electric charge of love that filled the room that morning. Hey guys, I helped Dad pick them out, Mom. Where's my kiss? Thank you, son. Martha, this is the best turkey you've ever made. You say that every year, you fibber. Fibber? Me? Bruce, help me out here. Is this not the best bird ever? <coughs> Dr. Wayne here. Are you sure? You've tried the medication. I see. I'll be right there. Thomas, you promised. I'm sorry, darling. I'll be back as soon as I can. It's Edward Fletcher. You've heard me discuss him. Hey, Bruce. Yes, sir? It's pretty snowy out there. I could sure use a good navigator. What do you say? Yes, sir! Come on, Zoro. You two be careful now. Dad, can I ask you a question? Sure, Bruce. What's on your mind? Well, today Mom said she liked her present, but she was crying. I don't get it. <laughs> Bruce, sometimes people are so happy that they can't find the words and their emotions take over. Sometimes they laugh when they're sad and cry when they're happy. Understand? Not really. <laughs> you will, son. One day it will all be clear to you. For now, young man, watch the car and stay out of trouble. Yes, sir. I'll be back before you know it. Out of the night when the full moon is bright Comes a horseman known as Zorro Oh, Renegade, hard to see with the 
And Bruce Wayne wins the Indy 500! The crowd goes wild! Hang on, Edward. Nurse, call an ambulance! Dad, that man is dead, right? Yes, son. It was his time. Are you and Mom going to die? Well, yes we will, Bruce. Everyone passes on. But not before our time. And that's a long way away. Promise? I promise, son. Good night, Bruce. When your mother closed that door, you weren't alone. I was there with you. Faceless. Nameless. But I could feel you. And that night, you could feel me. It was a short time later that everything changed. And in one horrifying instant, I exploded within your young heart. From that moment on, we were constant companions. I watched as you struggled to carry on, to find a reason for what had happened. When no reason could be found, I drove you to create a reason. To discover a purpose in a world gone mad. All your travels, all your training, the thirst for knowledge and adventure, I was there, silently urging you forward. We would take all the pain, all the rage, all the fear that had been bottled inside you, and we would share it with those who deserved it. Huh? We were magnificent then. We descended on this city like an unholy instrument of vengeance, relentless as a shark, blacker, than their dark hearts. Word quickly spread across the underworld. Criminals were terrified of the bat, and the city was a safer place to live. However, it wasn't long before your vanity and need for approval yielded to the call of celebrity. I have endured this, as well as your somewhat pitiful need for companionship. The war necessitates allies. I accept Gordon and the Bat Signal because it furthers our cause. Amusing. You assume I was talking about Gordon. I was referring to the boy. He's able to take care of himself. I see. Do you honestly believe- I will not discuss this. Very well. There are far more important issues in front of us. At the same time our crusade caused a radical drop in street crime, it also seemed to nurture a more extreme type of criminal. Power-mad geniuses. This, of course, indicates both schizophrenia and a split personality. Sadistic madman. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Make me a cake as fast as you can. Flamboyant opportunist. For a man who claimed he had no business with me, you certainly are going out of your way to have business with me. Obsessive murderous psychotics. <laughs> they all seemed compelled to rise to our unspoken challenge. But above all of them, there is one whose very name can send the city into a state of unbridled terror. There is one responsible for more deaths than all the others combined. Where others kill for power or profit, this one kills for his own amusement. There is only one solution for this insanity. We must satisfy justice. We must kill the Joker. We are not killers. I won't have blood on my hands. You speak to me of blood. 
I will show you blood. I will show you death. Feel his weight take you down. Bruce Wayne, humanitarian. You self-righteous hypocrite. You talk about the sanctity of human life while you lie buried under scores of human victims. What about their lives? Are they simply the cost of upholding your cowardly morality? In the final analysis, did we not create this monster? Axis Chemicals. That was the night, Bruce. After that, there was no turning back. Preoccupied with the rest of the gang, we left the Red Hood to his fate. And in doing so, we set <laughs> loose upon the night something far more savage. Every time we catch him and allow him to live, he breaks free to kill again. All of this horror and tragedy in the service of your code of honor. Don't you have anything to say for yourself? Everybody lives in harm's way. Tragedy strikes indiscriminately. The difference is how you deal with it. Faced with having to accept that, he had destroyed his chances for a normal life. The Joker chose madness instead. Frankly, <laughs> this is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm talking, <laughs> talking to Batman. <laughs> Tell me, Batman, is it true you're just an underdone potato? <laughs> Silence! <laughs> you consider this madness? What do you think it will be like when you turn your back on me? Ignore me now, and I promise you will live to regret it. You swore to your parents, to me, that you would dedicate your life to this crusade. And now, you choose to turn your back on me. In the name of what? Your so-called life? I understand you're wealthy. Tell me, do you enjoy tennis? Tennis is really my game sport, but you know Buffy. She, she likes, likes the blue, but I prefer the teal. What, what do, do you think? think of Indonesia? I think it's emerging as a real stinker. Stinker, Bruce Wayne. I waited all night for you. You always let me down, Bruce. I'm sorry, but... You're breaking my heart. I've had enough of this madness. Madness? I will show you madness! If you denounce me, if you try to jam me back into your subconscious, then I promise I will torment you until the day we die. I promise you'll wake up screaming every night of your pitiful life. That is the path of true madness. I know that the choices I've made have had repercussions. Tonight on that bridge, I came face to face with the damage I've done, and I don't think I could live with it anymore. You tell me I have no choice, that I owe it to those I sworn to protect, and those who I failed to protect. So tell me, Tell me how to carry on. I have a solution. Let's talk about Harvey. Harvey had it all. Money. Dazzling looks. Not only was he your best friend, as district attorney, he was in a position to help us. Then came the acid. Two-Face. Harvey's obsession with the number two makes it easy to anticipate his crimes. His dependence on the flip of a coin to make a decision made him a wildly unpredictable opponent. Harvey was in a position where his secret self could act freely. Harvey's condition ensured he couldn't be held accountable for anything Two-Face did. His condition? He's mentally ill. Perhaps you would prefer a more... Spiritual example. Ancient cultures speak of simple tribesmen inhabited by the spirit of great warriors. Modern training and mental conditioning can turn a small town school teacher into a killing machine. Even your beloved Don Diego understood the most basic principle of anything worth fighting for. In war, 
there are casualties. But I'm not a killer! I am painfully aware of that. I believe it has something to do with your father being a healer. That and the fact that you saw your parents brutally murdered before your eyes. Therefore, although we share a host body, I suggest we admit that we are separate entities. You are not responsible for my actions, any more than I am responsible for yours. As Bruce Wayne, you'll be free to chase women, build hospitals, kiss babies, whatever you desire. But when the Batman is needed, you will step aside and leave me free to deal with the devil in kind. You're talking about what? Self-induced psychosis? Voluntarily splitting our personalities? I'm talking about freedom to act, to fulfill our individual destinies. You are truly ruthless. I should know. It was my force of will that molded you in this image. But I channeled your fury towards a purpose. I tempered your wrath. Left unchecked, your vengeance would be... monstrous. The answer is no. Then you leave us no choice. You cannot dismiss me, and you will not yield to my will. You wish to be rid of me. You wish to lead a normal life. Then kill me. This gun. We both know what gun it is. One bullet from that gun will destroy me, utterly and completely. Think of it. A new life. Free of fear. Free of the horrible weight of responsibility. Free me. Free yourself. I... I can't. It would be... committing suicide. For God's sake, is this my life? Is this what I have to look forward to? Yes. It is our destiny. We lost our normal life a long time ago. We cannot change the past. All we can do is protect others and allow them the chance for the happiness that we'll never have. You have to accept that. The truth hurts. But a very wise man once said that the truth will set you free. You must understand, there is a line we may never cross. No killing. It is the only difference between us and them. As much as Batman is a terrifying symbol to the underworld, he is also a symbol to the good people of the city. A symbol of hope. If you can live with that, then Bruce Wayne can live with the responsibility. Agreed. In an effort to escape the police, the Joker has taken the patrons of this popular night spot hostage and is threatening to kill one hostage for every- Commissioner Gordon, it's him. I was getting worried. Thought maybe something had happened to you. Something did happen, Commissioner. But I managed to come away from it in one piece. I'm not sure I follow. Never mind, Commissioner.